Yeah. Oh. We give praise and steam and honor to the most high Yahweh where Yahusha Hamashiach. We go to uh John 5, 39 and Isaiah 44 and 24. They say certain scriptures for enemy think you have eternal life and they are they which justify me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Allah in you. I am coming in my father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that come from Allah in Isaiah 44 and 24. Or 25. Isaiah 44 and 25. All right. Go ahead. You said 25. 44 and 25. That frustrated the tokens of the liars and making diviners mad, that turned the wise men backwards and making their own their knowledge foolish. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter one, Bible verse twenty-five. You'd already seen one example of a frustrating the token of a liar, because Korah lied and said that they came from a land of milk and honey when they left out of Egypt. He actually compared Egypt to the land and said Egypt was greater. So that's exactly what he said. He said we could have stayed here. He brought us out here to kill us. He frustrated the token of that lie because he killed him. And not only that, after he killed him and everything that appertained unto him, the people stood up and said Moses killed them people. So then y'all killed 14,000 people in one sitting because of that. Go ahead. First Corinthians? Yeah, 1 and 25. Because the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men. We'll make it 17. Let me see what 17 is here. It says, For the Mashiach sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, yeah. not with wisdom of words, lest the stake of Mashiach should be made so, non-effective. That's why I say make the wisdom of men foolish. And he turns their wisdom, he turns their knowledge backwards. Turns wise men backwards. You can actually see that when they came to get the master in John 18. They all fell away backwards. They thought they were wise men coming to do something of a good work at that time. Then they ride up on them. They say, you, y'all, 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 now you say, yeah, everybody fell backwards. Because actually to be wise in this world, you're actually backwards. That's why dudes be beefing about like with the flat earth thing. When they be talking about, you know, NASA this and NASA that. I'm also of the thought processes. I don't think a lot of people necessarily believe NASA. I don't think a lot of people even entertain NASA or even look at nothing that NASA's talking about because too many black people worry about what I'm going to eat tomorrow and where I'm going to sleep at to be concerned with NASA talking about, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Like when you look at the average everyday person, Sorry. they don't really know or care about any of that stuff that niggas be arguing about. Go out there on them corners and ask somebody if they care if the earth flat or not. Go out there and ask somebody out here at work today if they care about a 12 tribe chart or not. They don't care. Do you know what I'm saying? All they know is that they're in misery, they're in pain, they're in sorrows, they're in sufferings, and they're admired in transgressions. And they want to be able to know how their soul is going to be spared alive. That's what they really care about. Only time people go to care about that is because they've attained some level of knowledge. And that knowledge and, and understanding of whatever it is they're learning have lifted their minds up. Not saying everybody that argues on those topics are in that state. Just talking about that in general. Because niggas don't care. We go cross town right now. I guarantee you everybody that you know don't care about none of that stuff. They don't care about none of that stuff. If you actually went to talk to them about saving their soul, not trying to preach no word to them, but hearing their thoughts and perspective on it, then you might actually get to see what they actually care about. You know what I'm saying? Because don't think, even if people living out here in the world, don't think that it, uh, every now and then it don't run across their mind what they soul going to rest at when it's all said and done. Because they think about it. It's just whatever it is that they like to do overpowers what they ought to do. Go ahead. It says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. He'll do what? I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, mm -hmm. and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. That's what he's telling you in Isaiah, but keep on going though. Where is the wise? Where they at? Where is the scribe? Where they at? Where is the disputer of this world? Uh -huh. Have not Elohim made foolish the wisdom of this world? Like, hold, up, hold what you got. I think it's Jeremiah chapter 9, man. It might be 8. Let me see. I want to say 9. I didn't want you to hear what he, t what he said. Let me make sure it might be 9 though. Because he say, where's the scribe? Where's the wild? Where are these people at? Yeah, it's Jeremiah 8, man, about verse 7. Make it 6, though. 
It says, I hark I hearken and heard, but they spoke not all right. They didn't speak right. You know, you sit back and you look at it, Absalom didn't speak right, Korah didn't speak right. It's always funny that when dudes take it upon themselves, that's why he said they speak a vision out of their own heart. They never tell you what's right. They'll tell you what they feel and what they think. They ain't gonna tell you what's right. A wicked nigga can never tell you what's right. Did not this man tell you that an evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit? So why do we look at wicked people and expect them to produce fruits of righteousness when this man told you plainly that that will not happen? Do you know what I'm saying? Because if a nigga's wicked, how can he teach you anything correct? And I ain't even talking about just no word. How can somebody evil tell you how to be good? And why would we be dumb enough to listen to an evil nigga tell me how to be good when he hasn't taught himself or herself how to be good? Yeah, this is how you be a good wife, but you're not a good wife to your husband. So how can you tell somebody how to be a good wife when you haven't learned how to do it? How can you tell me how to be righteous and upright when you haven't learned how to do it? That's impossible. And we'll sit down and go, and all the people knew Korah was wicked, and they ran right along with him. They ain't care. He's known. He got a good name. That's my nigga. I've known him for my whole life. Go ahead. Now, can we talk about this all day, man? I told you this last night. You don't owe loyalty to nobody but Yah and his son. That's the only person you owe loyalty to. That's it. You know what I'm saying? After that, it's loyalty to those who, the book say, I'm a companion of all those that fear them. So if you ask what this man say, how, how, what does communion, does righteousness have with unrighteousness and the master have with Belial? And I've got something in that Proverbs 24 that we read on Pentecost that we didn't delve into deeply because the Belial means to be worthless. And those nettles and thorns in that vineyard, one of them was worthless. To be reprobate is worthless. You supposed to have enough word in your mind and heart. Most of y'all to know when somebody reprobate. One of the clear signs of somebody being reprobate is anything that they desire, that they went outside the way of y'all to get it, he let them have it. And then you should see a steady decline of them departing from the word day by day, that they keep it less and less. Do you know what I'm saying? That it's not important because now he done gave you over to your own heart's desire. You can't have your desires and y'all. You have to pick one. You can't have both. You can have your desires. You will not get in this man's kingdom, though. Or you don't make him out to be a liar. You're not getting in. I don't care what nobody try to tell you. The man say, don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody come at you with no fancy words. You go outside this man's will, and you stay out it. You're going to stay outside of his gates. You can't go do what you want to do. This man say, what profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? You ain't getting no gain from him if you get everything. See, people think, I can get everything I want and y'all. Where well, that's at in the book? Because every righteous man in this book had to lose something. What righteous man in this book you see ain't lose something? They all lost something. They didn't get to keep what they had and him. They made a choice and they gave up what they had for him. That's why Paul say, looking forward, I don't look at nothing behind and count all things but dumb that I might gain Mashiach. Don't nobody want to do that. You want to keep your lust and see he doesn't want us to enjoy life. No, I don't want you to enjoy life. The life going to take you to hell. That's what the book says. That man say, you got to hate your own life also. If you're enjoying life, you're enjoying the world. If you're enjoying the world, you're an enemy of Elohim. And if you're an enemy of Elohim, you're not getting in the kingdom because all his enemies will perish. He say, he will repay you to your face. He say, if you love in life, that means you love sin. That means you love your flesh. Can't please Elohim if you're in the flesh. So you can't have both. Hamashiach gave up the whole world to gain eternal life. Gave up everything. But everybody screamed, they love him and they follow him and believe him. Somebody lying. Somebody is lying. You know what I'm talking about? And we sitting back looking at this man that's sitting on high looking at, that nigga's a liar. That nigga's a liar. That nigga's halfway. That nigga's a liar. He's faithful. He gonna have more people who lies and halfway meaning lukewarm. They not hot or cold. They ain't pick the side which they wanna run on. Then you gonna hear him say that one's faithful. That you let everybody tell it. Everybody faithful and believes. You let everybody tell it. Ain't nobody standing up and say, yeah, I got doubts. I doubt this and I doubt that. That's why I be mentioning y'all them people when he did the miracles. Some of them stood up and said, hey man, help me with my unbelief. You know what I'm talking about? Let's say man and, 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 and strengthen my faith. Uh, I don't believe like I'm supposed to. They ain't had no shame opening their mouth and saying that to that man so he could be able to assist them. Nobody don't want nobody to look at them and be like, man, you don't even believe all the way. You think somebody going to ridicule and point the finger at you. Ain't nobody who are y'all going to ridicule and point the finger at you if you say you got doubts. They're going to try to give you word and be able. Why do you think he say the strong ought to support the weak? 
if you're weak in faith and those who are strong in faith, then guess what that one strong in faith is supposed to do? Encourage you to get you strong, not point no finger at you and mock you to my ah, you don't believe. Ah, like what you doubting for? No, they're not going to do that. Unless you're just outright wicked, then they're just going to tell you, you outright wicked. Bottom line, go ahead, sir. We have verse 7 of uh, Jeremiah 8. Keep on going, sir. It said, Yea, the stork and Shamaim know of her appointed time. So, how does stork know when she, where she's supposed to be at? But we don't know where we're supposed to be at. Go and ahead. The turtle and the crane and the shallow observe the time of their coming. They know when it's time to go. But my people know not the judgment of Yahoo. You don't need that. That's the problem right there. They say they don't know the judgment of y'all. Y'all know the word for judgment, right? It's mishfat, right? You know what that means? Right ruling, ordinances. We don't even know what's right and wrong. Because we lean on the wisdom of men. We don't lean on what. That's what he was sitting there talking about. That's what wicked niggas do. Them niggas came up out of there hollering at David. Man, that nigga ain't ruling on my side, man. I don't like that nigga. And niggas be praying on that. See, y'all don't be thinking that niggas be watching and knowing when people disgruntled. So once they know somebody's disgruntled, then they're going to play on the fact that you don't really actually have a problem with the person. You have a problem that they didn't tell you what you wanted to hear. So an individual will exploit that anger that you have and use it to their benefit. But niggas get played like string fiddles on the daily. Do you know what I'm saying? But you ain't, most of y'all too, well I ain't gonna say this here, cause most of y'all would then run in those streets and run with shysty individuals and criminals and game runners. You know what I'm saying? So you don't be really be, you ain't really looking for people to run game on you like that. You know what I'm saying? I learned from the street and I learned from doing business, which originally the business world is worse than the street. Only difference is you're not getting killed because they run more game and are more shysty than anybody in the street. They just beat you with a pen. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen that in that real estate stuff off the rip that it was shady. Niggas will steal your deals. They'll steal your customers. They'll do all of that. They got no problem with it. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be wise enough to peak game. And it's the same thing with the word. Now, I noticed that with the word before I ever got into it. Dudes are shady. And dudes really want money, holes, and fame. Same thing dudes want in the street and in the music business. They want money, holes, and fame. And if they feel like, I don't like Dwayne, man. That nigga gonna never. Same thing. What did, what did Ahab say about Micaiah? What did he say about him? He never tell me nothing, nothing good. He never tell me what I want to hear. Because you always wrong, nigga. That's why. You always, some of y'all felt like that about your parents. Well, they always yelling at me and beating me. Well, stop doing wrong. And maybe they'll stop whooping you. Maybe they'll let you go outside and play with your friends. Maybe they'll buy you that toy you said you wanted when you were walking through Toys R Us. But you keep not making your bed. You keep not washing the dishes. You keep bringing F's home. And you expect to be rewarded and say, it's okay, baby. Mama love you. That's what you want. You want an enabler. You know what I'm saying? Well, Yahuwah is not in the business of sending or hiring enablers. He doesn't do it. Go ahead. It says, the wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. They take. Lo, they have rejected the word of Yahuwah. They did what? They have rejected the word of Yahuwah. That's why he got to frustrate the token of lie. Go ahead. And what wisdom is in them? What wisdom is in them? Therefore, I will give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. He'll get, he'll get a wide hood to others. And what else he'll do? Their fields to them that shall inherit them. That shall inherit their fields to them that should. So he said he'll give it to somebody else, didn't he? Didn't the master say something along them lines? He said, Yo, he said the kingdom of Shamahim will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruit. Because who is he talking to? He's talking to the priest right here. This is who Jeremiah talking to. Who did the Mashiach tell that to? They told it to the priest. What was your, I'm going to take it from you. I'm going to give it to somebody else. See, you, you got people, they had a kingdom in their hand and he take it from him and give it to somebody else. Give it to somebody else because you're not worthy of it. He say, what? He say they don't reject the word of you. What wisdom is in them? That's what Korah did. That's what the scribes did. They rejected the Mashiach. What type of wisdom have you got in you? You can't have none of you. Come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. See, people don't like it hard. See, I told you that. No, I seen that. I ain't really, my daddy was hard. And I took on that attribute without him teaching me how to be hard. It's just, I'm him and he is me. Similar as that. I come from the fruit of his loins. And guess what? My father in heaven is hard. His son is hard. Hard in 
not gonna cut no corners with you, not gonna play with you. I don't care about your feelings. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm gonna tell you what you ought to do. And if you don't wanna do it, that's on you. Suffer the consequences and repercussions that come from your, your, your insolence and your disobedience. And people don't wanna hear that. I wanna feel good inside. You wanna feel good inside, then do what the man tell you to do. You can't feel good inside sinning. You can't feel good inside disbelieving. How can you feel good? That's why people clean this. This what I'm gonna tell you like this. this these are the three things that people do when they don't want to actually follow the word. Find a nigga who gonna tell them what they want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Or I don't need no teacher. I'm gonna study on my own and I'm gonna figure it out on my own. Or just leave the book alone completely. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people choose the middle one. I'm gonna just study on my own. Okay, go ahead, knock yourself out. Do you know what I'm saying? See how you figure you're going to be looking at Floyd, like Floyd, Way for, uh, Floyd Mayweather when he read a book. Just confused. Sweating. Can't figure it out what you're reading. You don't know what you mean. So you know what ends up happening when you do that? You start coming up with your own interpretations that's usually in line of something that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to sit back and look at men who do what a lot of niggas do when they want to do something they want to do. They put your name on it. Stop lying on that man. That man, ain't, that man ain't got nothing to do with that. Nigga love to do that. When I feel like y'all has sent me to do this. Stop lying on that man. One thing we know, y'all ain't never sent nobody to do no wickedness, did it? He definitely ain't sent nobody to lie in his name. Niggas quick to say that, though. They, this is why people say that, that they feel like it'll stamp him better if they say y'all sent me. Oh, you shoot, shoot. Stanley said y'all sent him, boy. He had to send him. How you know? Because he said it. <laughs> he said he sent him. He wouldn't lie. Why wouldn't he lie? He a man. You know what I'm saying? He ain't the strength of Yasharad, I shouldn't lie. That's what niggas do though. I'm just telling you, that's what niggas do. Y'all sent me. He sent you, but you be lying though. Do you know what I'm saying? But you be lying though. Not even lying on him, just lying on general principle. You know what I'm saying? You ain't faithful though. You have to watch a nigga that ain't faithful. I told you that the other day. You have to watch a nigga that ain't faithful. Because the faithfulness is consistency. You have to watch somebody, somebody who's inconsistent. Y'all ain't son of Y'all's consistent all the time. That son come up every day, don't it? That son go down every day, don't it? Them waves crash up against the sea and never overtake them. Do you know what I'm saying? Things live, things die. That man is batting a thousand. He ain't never struck out. He ain't never missed a swing. He ain't never had a foul tip or nothing. Everything got planted in the seats. You got a souvenir. It's always going to go down. That's faithfulness. He's consistent. Hamashiach was consistent. Every time you saw him, it was the same. You have to watch niggas that's inconsistent. Because you know what inconsistency shows you? Fakeness. That means I'm one way in front of one group of people, and I'm another way in another group of people. It's never you the same every time I see you. You have to watch people like that because they wicked. We ain't talking about being fake with, with people like I'm a... I'm, I'm going to act like I'm down with Stanley what I see him by down talking when I leave from around him. I'm talking about consistent in how you live. That's fakeness. That's why he said, how can you believe that seek honor one from another, not the honor that comes from Elohim only? Because when you round the people who you feel you need to front for, then you front. When you round your sinner friends, then you don't do that. Do you know what I'm saying? So we just had an example of that the other day. It'll go a little deeper though. Nigga be playing, hold on. Nigga just sat there and did that. Just sat there. You know the worst part a nigga do? Tell a nigga about the word, then try to sin with him right after you told it to him. You know how wicked that is? Do you know how type of confusion that sends to the person that you're trying to impart that information to? So they looking at you and your God like, shoot, nigga. I don't want nothing to do with that. Yeah, shoot. I stay out here in these streets, toot my butt in the air, put my wang out and just chase random women. Get high and get drunk and live how I want to live. At the end of the day, that's what people really want to do. They want to they want to know their brew. They want to know y'all's name. They want to know the son's name. And I want to live how I want to live. And just have a little conversation with people in public. See, that's my way of life. See, I don't believe in that. But what about this stuff I see? See, I don't, I don't believe in that, though. See, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that, you know, because, you know, we got a little leeway. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm just telling the truth. We have 1 Corinthians 1 and 19. I'm telling the truth. For it is written... What's with? I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Because that's why he say he got to frustrate the token of liars and cause their knowledge to go backwards. Go ahead. Where is the wise? Where they at? Where is the scribe? Where they at? Where is the disputer of this world? Who's the disputer of this world? Y'all know who that is? That's the adversary. Go ahead. 
Have not Elohim made foolish the wisdom of this world? Mm -hmm. For after that, in the wisdom of Elohim, the world by wisdom knew not Elohim. So you know what ends up happening? We got puffed up in our vain mind and vain imaginations. It caused us not to know Elohim. <laughs> That's why they didn't know Mashiach when they saw him. He said, if you saw me, you saw the Father. Go ahead. It pleased Elohim. Through the what? By the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. So you know that's the thing right there, see? They'll say that stuff he's saying, that's foolish. That junk ain't right. You don't believe, so it ain't for you. So it's going to sound foolish. We talked about that the other day. The brutish understand if not. The natural man cannot receive the things of Elohim because it's foolishness to him. Everything the master said was foolishness to the people. When you come out this text, I ain't giving that up. I ain't stopping doing it. That's what you want me to do. I don't want you to do nothing. I done told y'all this before. I have no personal, I personally don't care if a woman wear pants or not. I personally don't care. I can't tell you that if this text is saying don't do it. I personally don't care if a woman wear jewelry or makeup or not. The text say don't do it. So what am I going to tell you? I'm going to tell you what the text says. You can do what you want to do. I personally don't care what you do. I know what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? When I say I personally don't care, it's your soul. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to drive myself crazy because you don't want to save your soul. I've already done that. You know what I'm saying? Worry about, come on, man, you don't want to do this, do this here. And niggas give you they black behind to kiss and will actually spread their butt cheeks open and tell you kiss that because you took concern for them. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to do this here. You trying to stop them, and then you know what you end up realizing? That these niggas going to do whatever it is that they want to do regardless. So I'm just going to tell you what the book says, and you can make your choice. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be all on top of you like this here. That junk is stressful, and I'm good on that. You know what I'm saying? I tried that. I ain't doing that no more. So when I say I don't care, it's not that I don't care. It's that I don't care enough to be running behind you and say, come on, baby. Don't put your hand on the stove again. You know that's the fourth time this week. Go ahead and put your hand on the stove again. Go ahead and burn it. Clearly you want to burn your hand off. You know what I'm saying? Because that's eventually what y'all does. He get tired of telling you. Telling you. Come on, baby. Don't put your hand on the stove. 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 You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and put your hand on the stove. I don't care, man. You know how your people get if you running them streets? They be like, they're running them streets. They be like, just, just, just go and stay out there, man. Just don't stay out there. That what you want to do? I hope them cracker lock you up or nigga put a bullet in your head. And you hear something, I could just say that about your son. I'm tired of talking. I done bonded this nigga out five times. You know what I'm saying? I done sent him to go get a job here and got up there. Nigga ain't go get it. He want to hang with a friend smoking weed and selling crack. And then guess what? I hope he died. I ain't going to shed no tears. I'm done. You have some people, people who actually do that. Like they got tired. It'd be more stressful for them living. Yeah, it'd be more stressful for me trying to stop you. That's what yeah, that's what happened. Granddaddy got tired. He said, Cain, I love you, but you got to go. You got to go. He got tired. See, and what ends up is, is the people, this is how people do. Because y'all got tired. Then when he started killing niggas, oh, why is he doing it? Because he got tired. So I'm going to tell you what niggas do. Because he told you this in 2 Chronicles 36. He son his prophets because he had compassion on the place where he placed his name at and for his people. He didn't want to kill you. See, what's going happen is you show that compassion and mercy to people and they take it for granted till you say, I don't care. Do what you want to do. Oh, you don't care about us? Oh, you, you forgot all this stuff I did before it got to this point where I say, I don't care what you do. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't care what you do. There's some people, what they do is no longer my concern. It used to be my concern. It's no longer my concern. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do. You know what I'm saying? If it's God's will to save your soul, let his will be accomplished. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't personally care if people eat pork, shrimp, or doodle if they want them. I ain't going to tell you the book say you can do it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I mean. I, I don't personally, because I don't have a, a personal preference on what people do. You can live your life how you want to live it. But when it comes down to what his book says, I have to tell you what his book says. My personal preference don't mean anything. Because that's real talk. I never, I never walk around and care. I don't like for women to wear pants. I never cared. I never cared about women wearing. I didn't care for women that wore weave. It wasn't attractive to me. Other than that, but I didn't care if they, oh, you wear weave. You hate yourself. I didn't do none of that. I didn't care. I didn't, most of the time I felt like, dang, that girl weave stank. That junk smells. Do you know what I'm saying? Not smell like it's dirty. It's just some of that hair gave off an odor. It's kind of... Like, nah, man. I don't like it. it. Smells bad. But I ain't had no thoughts about it, though. 
And people don't be realizing that because they meet you after you get in the word and they try to guess how you was. Like, I don't care. All I want to do is smoke weed, get money, and, and chill with a little muffin. And that was it. That was it. I didn't care about nothing else. They didn't want to do nothing. I didn't spend my time thinking about that. I didn't necessarily care for women who dressed half naked. I'm like, she might got an issue. I wouldn't talk to her. She possibly could be a whore. Straight up now. Little old skirts and booty shorts and all that. That junk didn't do nothing for me at Fourth Fist. I want to be with you long term. You know what I'm saying? I looked at that as you're dressed like a whore, so that's what I'm going to think about you. That's how you presented yourself. That's how you sell yourself. What you want me to believe? That's just fashion? I don't believe that's just fashion. All the cool kids are doing it. All the cool kids are doing it. Cool kids smoke crack too. Come on. It says, for the Yahudim require a sign. They require what? A sign. What else? They, what else? And the Greeks seek after wisdom. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach the Mashiach. Crucified. Unto the Yahudim, a stumbling block unto the Greeks' foolishness. Foolishness. That's good. Come on back to Isaiah 44. No, let's look at Jeremiah 28. Let's look how he frustrated a token of a lie. We talked about the frustration of a token of a lie last week. Remember that dude that came up and said he made himself a priest? He said, well, he, if you're a priest, why you straighten Jeremiah then? That's the part that killed me. You say you're a man of God. And you say there's another man. You say he got the word. Y'all's with him. He doing something wrong. You don't straighten him. Well, we know you ain't a God. I ain't never seen God not straighten somebody that was here. He done straighten people that ain't his. Come on. Yeah, give me about verse 10. What's wrong, Henry? It says, Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. And Hananiah spoke to spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says Jehovah, even so so I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. How long did he tell Jeremiah they were gonna be in Babylon? And why long did Hananiah just say they were going to be there? So somebody lying. Go ahead. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Then the word of Yahuwah came unto Jeremiah the prophet. After that, Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus said Jehovah, thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. Mm -hmm. For thus said Jehovah of hosts, the Elohim of Yasharal, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all the nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. King of Babylon. And they shall serve him, and I have given him the beast of the field also. Mm -hmm. Then said the prophet Jeremiah to Hananiah, the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, you who have not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. He make him to trust in what? A lie. He make him to trust in what? A lie. So he got to do what? He got to frustrate the lies of this man. Go ahead. Let's see how he did it. Therefore, thus said Jehovah, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. Cast you well? Off the face of the so earth. So what that mean he, when he say he's going to cast him off the face of the earth? He's going to kill him. This year thou shalt die because thou hast taught rebellion against Jehovah. Mm -hmm. So had not the prophet died in the same year in the seventh month. Well, we see how he frustrated the token of that lie. Now, we sitting here really dealing with uh, what we fin finishing up, right? That prepare thyself without and then rebuild thy house, establish thy house, build thy house. So we looked at Ezra, right? Who was the one who told, told them to go rebuild the house in Jerusalem? Who told them to go do it? Cyrus. Cyrus told him to go do it. Remember we looking at verse 28. He said Cyrus is his shepherd or his ruler or his teacher to perform all of his pleasure. He was a Persian. Come on over here to uh, Matthew 17 and 3. Matthew 17 and 3. And behold, there appear unto Moses and Elias talking with Make him. Make it five. We got to roll. It said, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. This hear is it. ye him. Hear ye him. And when the Hold on. He said, Hear ye him. Now, you know why, why that's important? Because you just read what he told Nebuchadnezzar everything was given into his hand. And who took over? Cyrus took over. So the same thing that was pertained to Nebuchadnezzar obtains to Cyrus, pertains to Cyrus. He just said, Cyrus is his shepherd. Should not the people hear the shepherd? See, you got people see Cyrus was a Mashiach. If you think Cyrus was a Mashiach, you're an idiot because he can't set a man that's not of the house of Yasharal to rule over his people. So you know it's not really about Cyrus. But get Numbers 27 and 16. Because he says Cyrus is a shepherd. 
He say Cyrus is the one that has to perform his pleasure, and he the one that has to build the temple, and he the one that got to lay the foundation. That's the angel. 27 to 16. Let Yahuwah, the Elohim of the Ruach of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, which they, which may go in before them, which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation... So guess what? Cyrus, though he wasn't the one that actually performed it, he led them out into exile. And now he lead them in back to what? Restoration. This is what he's telling them, correct? Go ahead. That bring them in that the congregation of Yahuwah be not as a sheep with half no shepherd. So get what? He set up and have a ruler over these people on their way out. Go ahead. And Yahuwah said to Moses, take Yahushua the son of Nun, a man of whom is the ruler that may lie by hand upon him. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And that and thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Yahshua may be obedient. That's good right there. Come on to uh, the Ezra chapter 1, I want to say. Well, we dealt with Ezra 1. Let's look at Ezra chapter 2 towards the end of it. We need Ezra chapter 2. Let's look at verse 68. When they came to the house of Yahuwah, which is at Jerusalem, offered freely for the house of Elohim to set it up in his Remember place. that word is Nadab, right? A voluntary offering. That's what it gave you rid of. Because you got to understand something. They're preparing the house, and they prepared the house by bringing all the vessels, getting all the trees, all these things that you need to get ready before you build the temple. What type of things do you think you need to get ready before you build your temple for this man? What do you think you need to get ready? What do you need to have to prepare yourself to build this house? Huh? Structure. Not just structure, like what do you need to be, before you can prepare yourself to rebuild the house, which means to be born again, what do you need to be able to do it? Oh, I was saying instructions. Oh, instructions. Yeah. Let's look at something, right? Give me Luke chapter 5, man. I want to say about verse 30. Luke chapter 5, verse 30. Go ahead. It says, But the scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the publicans and sinners? Mm -hmm. And Yahushua answered and said unto him, They that are whole need not a physician, mm -hmm. but they that are sick. Mm -hmm. I came to call the righteous, but sinners into repentance. Go ahead. And they said unto him, why do disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of Pharisees, but thine eat and drink? And, they, and he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? Mm -hmm. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. And he spake also in the parable unto them, No man putteth a piece of new garment upon an old, if otherwise then both the new maketh the rent, mm -hmm. and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeth not with the old. So, so he say that the, the, the new's not going to agree with the old. What you need to do? Keep going. It says, And no man putteth the new wine into old bottles, <coughs> else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. So what's the first thing you're going to need to prepare yourself to build this house? Not just that, you're going to have to have a new mind frame. Give me Ezekiel 18 and 28. You're going to have to have a new mind frame. See, the reason why a lot of people can't rebuild the house and, and uplift that structure is because they're trying to put new wine in old bottles. So this is why niggas be bursting at the seams and there hasn't actually been a change because you're not trying to change. Ezekiel 18. Make it 25. It said, Yet ye say, The way of Yahuwah is not equal. Here now, O house of Yasharal, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? 
when a righteous man turned away from his righteousness and committed iniquity and died in them for his iniquity that he have done shall he die mm -hmm. again when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and do of that which is lawful and right he shall save his soul alive did anybody think that what he just described is just do you think it's just that if a man called himself to be righteous and he go and commit iniquity in another place, he's saying he trusts in his righteousness, he shall perish. You think that's just? Or you think that y'all should remember all the good stuff you did and not cast away the fact you did something wrong? You know why it's just for him to smash you on that? Because you knew right from wrong and you chose to purposely and willfully rebel against me. You knew better and you chose to do that. Therefore, I'm going to let you die in that. Versus the wicked man who may have not known any better when he's made aware of what's wrong, he turned himself from it. It's only just that he be saved from that because he considered. The righteous man had already considered. That's why he was righteous. You didn't come out the room righteous. Go ahead. Go sit down. It said again, when the wicked man turns away from wickedness that he is that he committed, he doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. But he that considered and turned away from all his transgression that he had committed, he shall surely live and he shall not die. Yet said the house of Yasharal, the way of you who is not equal. O house of Yasharal, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Wherefore I will judge you, O house of Yasharal, everyone according to his ways, said Jehu. Mm -hmm. Repent and turn yourselves from all transgressions. Do what? Repent and turn yourselves from all So before you can prepare your house, that's the first thing you need to do. Besides getting a new mind frame. Go ahead. So that so that iniquity so iniquity shall not be your ruin. That's what ended up getting the first temple destroyed with sin, if you go read Second Chronicles chapter seven. He said, if you commit sin, I'll destroy this temple. And it'll be a proverb and an astonishment and a hiss. And people will walk by it and say, why has he done this to this house? And Mashiach was up there on that stake. And he was a, an astonishment and a hiss and a proverb. And he destroyed that house. Go ahead. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed. And make you a new heart and a new ruach. I want to ask y'all a question. How did Hamashiach cast away all his sins and transgressions and make him a new heart and a new ruach? How did he do it? How did he do it? Anybody got any idea how he did it? That's one of them. I'm talking about before he even rose from the grave, he had already done that. The new heart and new spirit came after When he took that cup, he became sin. But then he had to renounce his sin and his and his uh and his and the flesh at the same token. What do he say? You got we say make you a new heart and a new ruach, right? He say cast away from you all your sins and iniquities, so iniquity will not be your ruin. Well, let's look and see how he did that first. First, let's read Romans chapter eight and verse one. The process of preparing your work without, so you can build then build your. See, that's what people should be messing up at. You trying to build the house without actually preparing your work. Outside the camp before you build it. Oh, he sin in place. I put some of it, but he actually cast it, sin away from him. We're going to look at how he cast it away. Go ahead, sir. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in the Mashiach, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruach. For the law of the Ruach of life is in Yahushua Mashiach, and has made me free from the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through flesh. Elohim sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 5. And after Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, John chapter 19 and verse 28. Make it, yeah, 28. It says, For Elohim doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her he did eat. Where did Eve come from? Adam. And what was Adam? He was flesh and blood, was he not? Now let's look at John chapter 19 and verse 28. Look at 24.
Henry. Come on, Henry. Come on, John 19, 24. It says, they said, therefore among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they parted my raiment among them, mm -hmm. and for my vesture did they cast lots. They cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. The soldiers did. Now there stood by the stake of Yuzha, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Yahushua therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Mm -hmm. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. Mm -hmm. And from that hour the disciples took her into his own home. That's another thing you needed to do to prepare yourself for the house. We talked about it when we first started looking at this. And that is, you have to forsake all that you have. Now why we say cast away iniquity so sin won't be your ruin you have to cast away the things that could cause you to go astray it doesn't matter who or what it is the first person you have to cast away is you you got to throw your whole self away to take it put it in the dumpster because if you keep yourself with you that's what he mean when he say you can't and it's also talking about the old and new covenant you can't take that old man with you and then think you can put that new man on the top of it and think you're going to be straight i done heard dude say see that old man be raising up he ain't got no business raising up you know why that old man ain't got no business living himself up because he's supposed to be dead you supposed to have crucified yourself with mashiach so you mean to tell me sin is resurrecting from the dead that's less than likely do you know what I'm saying? People say that all the time. I got that old man. That old man need to be dead. That's the whole purpose of what you got immersed for. You saying I'm dead now. That person no longer lives. I live in the image of him who created me and died and rose again for me. And now I live for him and not for myself. So if your old man raising up, then you just been walking around lying because you still living for yourself. You didn't actually consider that you were supposed to die to your flesh and to your ways and to your doings and to your sins and to the world. You still trying to live for it. That's why he say if you got to get immersed again, you done put this man to an open shame. It's a lot of people done put this man to an open shame. You know what I'm saying? You went and got immersed and then you just, you might as well shoot. You should have just went swimming. Do you know what I'm saying? You might as well have just went swimming. That's one of the reasons, because we were talking about this the other day, right? And then come say, because scripturally, I can't deny nobody that. I can't tell you. Really, like if somebody say, oh, I want to get immersed and I really don't want to do it, I don't want to do it because I know you're going to damn yourself. If I feel like, yeah, this thing's not ready, you're going to damn yourself. I really be trying to kind of persuade you of not damning yourself. But I can't stop you from damning yourself if that's what you want to do now. You want to damn yourself? By all means, I will help you. Do you know what I'm saying? Shoot, y'all do it all the time. You want to damn yourself? He will gladly assist you. He'll glad. He has no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? People don't really take how serious that is. For most people, it's just a ritual. It's no different than the, the ritual diverse washings that were in the law. I got to wash my feet. I got to wash my hands. You're not really realizing what you're doing, so you don't take it seriously. And next thing you know, you done joined yourself into a covenant. And he said, all that don't obey this covenant, I'm going to kill him. Go ahead. After this, Yahushua, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. He what? I thirst. Go ahead. Now there was a set vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon his Mm -hmm. And put it into his mouth. Mm -hmm. And you who should therefore have received the vinegar. What did he do? He said it is finished. It's what? It is finished. It's what? It is finished. And what did he do? He bowed his head and gave up the rule. The first thing he gave up was the breath of life. So if you sit back and you say, okay, he gave up the breath of life, what do you think that means that he gave up? He gave up that. That's what he breathed in the, the Adam, right? Now let's look at 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. So, you know, one of the instances for breath, you know, is that it's Abel's name. You know what I'm saying? So, when you look at you giving up the breath of life, he gave himself up. So, the first thing how he cast away iniquity was he cast himself away. 
because he became sin to destroy sin. So in order to cast it away, he had to give himself up. So I'm going to cast myself away. You know, the second thing he let go was his blood. Because flesh and blood can't do what? So when you're looking at flesh and blood, you're looking at a natural man. So he gave up the things of this life and natural movements and shakings and doings and thoughts. That's the only way you can cast it. That's the only way iniquity is going to be your ruin. Because you're still walking in the flesh. So he renounced that at his death and cast that away. Therefore, iniquity wasn't his ruin because what happened? Then he resurrected from the dead to give you the ability to make yourself a new heart and a new ruach. Therefore, he could rebuild that house, a spiritual house with a spiritual priesthood, offering sacrifices that are acceptable to Elohim by Yahushua HaMashiach. It's niggas that's offering sacrifices to this man that are not accepted. Nigga feel like, I know the word. I keep the Sabbath. He gonna accept my offering. How? You a king, nigga. That man said the, the sacrifices of the wicked are an abomination. He said, how, he said, how much more when they bring it with a wicked mind? So you think because you sacrificing the Sabbath? This is what this is going to kill me is a nigga make a sacrifice, but you wicked all the time. So when you make a sacrifice for this man, that man looking like this nigga here crazy. I don't want this. How would you feel if somebody brought you a molded cake and say this is for your birthday? Take this from my hand. Ain't that's what the give you nice did to Joshua didn't brought them that molded bread? Take this from my hand. How would you feel if somebody bought you some underclothes they had doodle -doo stains in them? <laughs> they ain't bring you no fresh pack, you know what I'm saying? They brought you some used one with doodle -doo stains in them. That's what you look like when you bringing this man, your flesh to this man, because it has uncleanliness and filth on it. That's what you bringing him. And you asking like, he pulled to take it. Better than nothing. You want because the reason why I mentioned it like that, because what's supposed to be coming out that house? A sweet smelling savor, right? And you don't bought this man stink. Who wants to sit here and smell someone's inward parts? This is what you brought him. You have to use it to who would sit back and bring this man vegetables that have that are that are rotted? He told you what he told you in the law about bringing animals, they better not be what? Lame, broken bones. Have no, don't bring me nothing, no, don't bring me something that you wouldn't want for yourself. Because I, because what did we read the other night in Psalm 50? I ain't took nothing up out your house for no burnt offering, no sacrifice. I ain't took no goat from you. Why you think Moses turned around and said, I ain't took no ass or nothing from them? Samuel said the same, I ain't took nothing from these niggas. We can't say that ain't nobody never brought them nothing because you know that Saul brought Samuel an offering when he came to holler at him. You know what he brought him? Who know what Saul brought Samuel? You know what he bought him? No, he bought him silver. He bought him some cash. He didn't, Samuel didn't ask him for it. But he said, we got to take him this. What Sam, when they mean that I didn't take nothing from you, meaning I didn't go to you and say, give me this. I need this for this. Give it to me. You know what I'm saying? That's what he meant when he said the hireling. Give it to me. Because the hireling cares for filthy lucre. So he preaching for money. Let me get that cash out of you, nigga. I need that cash. Because we know the master took something from the people. Say the women ministered things about it as substance to this man. He didn't walk around and say, give me provender now. He didn't do that. He didn't have to. Mm. He said the laborer is worthy of his hire. So he didn't have to do it. He'll move people to do it. Nigga be always talking about, you know that nigga be clowning. Most of these Hebrew niggas don't want no money though. I'll tell you how the Hebrew niggas get you on the cab. This is how they get it. We don't take tithes, we take free will offerings. What? What's the difference? I've seen niggas, you see niggas say that? Mm -hmm. We don't take tithes, we take donations. I don't see no difference. You might as well just say we take tithes, man. Mm -hmm. If that's the case. It don't be no tithe for real. No, it don't be no tithe for real. It's drop, it's dropping. This is what you got. Because, and then when you look at the tithes, Yahuwah didn't force anyone to do it. You knew what you were supposed to do, and you were supposed to do it. He didn't force you. When you read a man forcing these people to give offerings, he say, for this, this and this, you give an offering. When you come in like this, and you had tithes where if you wanted to, you're supposed to offer your animals or your crops, and if you wanted to keep them, the priest did an estimation. They did that part. You gave him the, the monetary equivalent, and you kept your animal. 
See, dudes don't talk about that. You know about that? Yeah, dudes don't talk about that. But he didn't force no, he didn't force nobody to come to Jerusalem. Where is your free will offering? Where is your bring? He didn't do none of that. You ain't gotta bring it. I don't care about that, nigga. Do you obey me? That's what I care about. I didn't ask you about no free will offerings, nigga. I didn't ask you about no burnt offerings. He said, I didn't tell your fathers about no offerings and sacrifices when they came up out of Mizraim. I told them to obey my force. He said, put your sacrifices to meat and eat flesh. You think this man around here to my, yeah, they need to bring that money to me. I need that. That man don't care nothing about that. It's his anyway. Money's made from cotton. Coins are made from precious metals. It's his anyway. So you ain't got to bring it. What you need to bring is your obedience and your belief. That's what you need to bring. And niggas can't bring that. Keep on going to what we have though. I got to crank it up with nothing. This is almost five Side, go sit down. Go sit down. She tried to put the key face on. It didn't work. Yeah, um, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. It say, and so it was written, the first man Adam was made of a living Ruach, and the last Adam was made of a quickening Ruach. How be it that had living knee fashion, not oh, yeah. what it says. So. Yeah. 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 And the ad, last Adam was made of a quickening Ruach. How be it that was not first which was spiritual, but that which was natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. So you notice how he say the first Adam is a living soul? So in order to cast away sin, you got to cast away that living soul or you have to cast away that breath of life or you have to cast away yourself. So he cast away his life so iniquity wouldn't be his ruin. Because what happened? He didn't suffer his Kadesh one to see corruption. So when we look at, you know, he said, you know what the man said about all men? He said, all men are what? Vanity. So all men are breath. Or worthlessness or vain, depending on the context of what word being used in that particular verse where he say that in Ecclesiastes. So you have to cast that breath away. If you don't cast away that living soul, then iniquity will be your ruin because the flesh will consume you. I don't know why we don't believe that that carnal nature will consume you. It will consume you. That's the same thing I told you about running with sinners. It's not a question of if but when. It's not a question of if but when. Because eventually, because if you're still carnal, then there's doubts and, 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 uh, and unbelief in you. And all it's going to take is the right situation and circumstance where your faith is going to be tested. And then you're going to have to make a choice of you're going to trust your who or are you going to trust yourself. Most people trust themselves. They don't really trust y'all. They don't trust y'all because they can't see him. So most of the reason why people, and then on top of that, it seems like Yah doesn't give them what they want. You know how many people you done seen turn away from the word? They really turned away from the word because they weren't getting what they wanted. You know what I'm saying? Whatever that may be. Some people turn away from the word because they ain't got a husband or a wife. Some people turn away from the word because they feel like their life was too hard. You know what I'm saying? I'm struggling too much. I got to go through this and I got to go through that. Not realizing that struggle builds character. That's why niggas can't stand for nothing and ain't firm on nothing because you ain't got no character. Anybody that's done any manner of success in life, period, whether it be spiritual or whether it be natural, went through a period of struggle. It did not happen overnight. That's where their character was built at. So a lot of them was, I, I'm just mentioning because this white man just popped in my head. I think the dude, Paul Mitchell, man, was homeless. That man was homeless. Selling all that. You know what it is, white You know if you walk past some white salons, you see his name on, on, the, on the doors. You see all the products that white women get their hair done with. That man was homeless. While he was pitching that, he could have quit. You know what I'm saying? What people don't realize is for Hamashiach, it was a struggle. He had a struggle dealing with the people and probably not wanting to knock their whole head off. You know what I'm saying? While he was walking in that flesh, it was a struggle. But because he endured the struggle, just like we mentioned, he learned obedience from the things that he suffered. Because of his struggle, it built his character. And his character allowed him to be set at the right hand of the Father. And a crown placed upon his head and to overcome death. And to overcome death for all those who love him at his appearance. Because he was willing to struggle. And to endure that struggle. That's why he say when you see the monster the stones, when persecution or tribulation, you will get offended because niggas don't want to suffer. This means you ain't got no character. Everybody wants stuff easy. If it's easy, then I want that route. I don't want the route where I got to put in some work. You notice that most of the strongest people you know struggle in their lifetime. Most of the weakest people you know, life was very, very easy. Now you have some people who didn't struggle in their life, but their people were hard. 
So they caused him because he's like Deion Sanders went off on his son because his son acting like he a gangster. That nigga say, "Come on, cuz you got a trust fund. You ain't never been poor or struggled in your life, and that's a hard balance for people who became wealthy to make sure that that stays in their children." I seen a dude, football player, he make his sons work, he made them do summer camps and all this type of stuff because he says it's not your money, it's my money. So you're going to have to go out here and do this here so your character can be built. You have to watch people who people handed them stuff and they people patted them on their butt and held their hand their whole life. They probably never will fully stand up and be a man or a woman as far as strength of character is concerned. They'll always be weak because they'll always look for somebody to save them and do it for them. That's why people get mad at the word. Because they feel like you supposed to did this. I ain't supposed to did nothing. but told you what the book said. I can't live it for you, nigga. I can't control what you do. Come on, man. Oh, that's good in 1 Corinthians 15. Come on back to Ezekiel 18 so we can finish this out. You notice that's what, how many times you done seen people in the world, they get disgruntled because they feel like the person teaching them is supposed to did it for them. You supposed to stop me from having sex. How? How was I supposed to stop you from that? How was I supposed to stop you from breaking the Sabbath or getting drunk or telling lies or being spiteful or just being outright wicked? How was I supposed to stop that? I don't stand a chance because you're my teacher. No, you ain't stand a chance because you're wicked. I have nothing to do with your heart and your mind. That's you. That's you. That's you. That's you. That's your heart. That's your mind. I have nothing to do with that. Go ahead. You start at verse 30. It says, therefore I will judge you, O house of Yashara, everyone according to his ways, mm -hmm. said who Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your rule. Go ahead. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new rule. That's what the master did. He cast away his breath. He cast away his blood. That's what caused him to transgress. He said, Take, drink, this is my blood. That's what caused him to transgress. Because he had to become a man. He say all so all they say you know all souls that sin shall die. He became a man, so he had to cast that away, so it wouldn't be his destruction, because he overcame at the last. And if we want to overcome at the last, then we have to cast that away. And then, but you gotta already prepare your mind and heart to do that. Then you can see. This is what we like to do: find out you an Israelite, learn out a little information about Mashiach, and now all of a sudden you're trying to build a house with no foundation. You ain't even built on nothing. You know what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 2 is the foundation of the faith? Let's see. 2 and 19. Because he said, why shall you die, O house of Yasharal? Turn yourselves and live. Why would you die? What's the purpose of death? What's the purpose of sin? Why would you engage in that? I don't understand it. Come on, sir. It says, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the Kadeshim mm -hmm. and the household of Elohim, mm -hmm. and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Built on the foundation of what? Apostles and prophets. Yehusha Mashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. Well, let's look at how you get built on that foundation. John chapter 17 and verse 9. Because remember he said that by Cyrus, right? He's going to build the city and the foundation is laid. So we talked about this last night briefly when he sat back and he told you what? That he confirmed the words of his servant and the counsel of his messengers. The purpose of his messengers was to testify you of Mashiach and Yahusha where it was confirmed in everything that he said because he confirmed the advice or the counsel of the prophets who spoke of him. So when you take him on and you built on that foundation, then guess what you're going to do? You're going to confirm the words of his servant and you're going to approve the, 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 the counsel of his messengers. Niggas live in any kind of way and you see and they're not confirming the word of his servant nor the counsel of his messengers. How? You know how when we get got caught up on? That nigga sound like he know what he talking about. You know the best way to get an ignorant person? Not a dumb person, but an ignorant person. Say something that they don't know. That's the best way to get an ignorant person because we can't say dumb. Because you're not dumb if you don't know something. You know what I'm saying? Just like you talking about Russian, I don't know Russian. So if a nigga wanted to see me with some Russian, guess what they got to do? Make it sound real good. I don't know it. So shoot, sound like you know what he talking about. It sound good. Shoot, I'm going to ride with it then. And that's what people do with the word. He sound like he know what he talking about. Yeah, I'm going to ride with him on that. But guess what happens over time? You see the fruits of their labor. 
That's how people get got. That's how some of y'all got got on listening to some people before you cast them away. He sounded like he knew what he was talking about. Boy, I can remember, like I said, I told you, boy, we seen Ricard from GOC say, yeah, I slept with niggas' wives. I said, well, shoot. How niggas keep listening to him after that? Like, I ain't telling you what somebody said. We looked up at a video where that man stood up and said, yeah, I'm sleeping with men's wives. I'm the leader and founder of this organization. I say that I am a man of a higher. You know what he, you know he say? And he said, you know what? I hear hoes. And when a man approached him about it in another video, he ran from him. I don't want to talk about that. What you mean you don't want to talk about it? I, we got to forgive him. You know, that's a, it's always funny that Hebrews, like they said, right? Remember when Eddie Long got caught going off touching the little children? Mm -hmm. Every Hebrew in America has something to say. It's a nigga, Hebrew nigga getting alleged or molesting a seven-year-old girl. Where's the evidence? We need the proof. Do y'all know if he did it or not? How this nigga get a pass? You ain't give Eddie Long no pay. You ain't know if he touched them children or not. They put it on the news. He touched them children. You say he touched them. But we know he touched them. He sent the spandex photos to young boys. Grown men don't do that. Grown men don't send pictures of each other to each other. Dead serious. When you ever took a selfie or a picture of yourself and sent it to your homeboy, it was just you. <laughs> Jump dead serious. Women do it, but that's not something that men do. See, it's not a big deal if a woman say, Girl, check out my outfit. Bam, send it to her. Ain't no big deal. Hey. You know what I'm talking about? Let her, how would you feel you picked your man's phone up and you got pictures of niggas in his phone? Smiling. Selfies. <laughs> you gonna be looking at this nigga like, Have I married a sodomite? More than not. More than all, check out my outfit. You know what a nigga do if he want a nigga to see his shoes? He take a picture of the shoes and send him the shoes. But check out my new kids, bro. What you think? Nigga ain't gonna take a picture of himself with the shoes on. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Nigga, a nigga will lay his whole outfit on the bed and take a picture and send it to his homeboy. I'm gonna be fresh on them nigga tonight, boy. Nigga ain't gonna put the fit on and say, take the picture for us so I can send it to Stanley. Cause soon as that nigga get his phone, nigga gonna be like, bro, don't you never send me nothing like that again in your life. I'm for real though. I'm for real though. Men don't do that. I wish I would catch a nigga got a selfie of a nigga in their phone. And I'm talking about, boy, what you got going on, boy? You blessing mics out here, boy, what? A nigga sending headshots? <laughs> nigga sending headshots? Not headshots. The only way a man gonna send a photograph of himself with another man is it's a family photo or all your homeboys in a photo y'all were somewhere everybody got in the picture, nigga send it to you. Dolo photo though? I wish a nigga would, boy. Your number getting deleted immediately. You know what I'm talking about? Next time you text a call, you're gonna get it. Who is this? What you mean who is this? Oh, you that nigga sent me that picture, man. I already told you, man, I look at a nigga suspect who take a whole bunch of selfies anyway. That's just not manly behavior. You know what I'm talking about? In the mirror all the time. If you take a bathroom. Bathroom. Grown man take a bathroom self. You better be sending them to your old lady, nigga. That's who you better be sending them to. You just got them in your phone. I mean, if, I, if you see that in the woman's phone, you ain't going to think nothing about it. You're going to be like, you don't think one of three things. That nigga bored, she vain, or she got too much time on her hand. Or she feeling herself. One of the four. You see a nigga like this? Oh, that nigga's gay. That's the first thing coming to nigga mind. That nigga's gay. Why you say he gay? That nigga got 17 pictures of himself in a row. <laughs> in a row. Ain't nobody else in there with him. It's just him. And this nigga posing. I just see my over talking about man, why you niggas using that Snapchat dog filter? She said, nigga, that's gay. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I ain't on Snapchat. You know what I'm talking about? But that what my whole girl said. She said, yeah, man, nigga, you gay. <laughs> I say, no. I wouldn't know Snapchat ain't my speed. It's a little too much for me. Go ahead, man. A little too fast for you? A little too fast for me. I can't keep up with all that. <laughs> my speed. <laughs> too fast for me. That's enough right there. Yeah. Shoot, isn't it? Because Snapchat, you got to look at niggas' pictures and videos. I don't really want to know you like that. I better want to know a nigga like that on Instagram. I see a nigga, like I said, a nigga say, man, I can't post no YouTube video on Instagram. Nigga say, you can't put no YouTube video on it. Nigga, 2017, this nigga tell me I post no YouTube video on Instagram. 
<laughs> that nigga say, man, that junk whack. I said, I hear you. Trying to preach the word on Instagram. Let it go, baby. It's all right. <laughs> Use a proper being. Go ahead, man. Yeah, John 16. Yeah, John 17 and, and 9. It say, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Mm -hmm. And all of mine are thine, and thine are mine. And mm -hmm. I am esteemed in them. Esteemed. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. They in the world. And I come to thee. I come to thee. Could thy father keep through thy own name who's those whom thou hast given me, mm -hmm. that they may become one as we are. Mm -hmm. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me have I kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, mm -hmm. that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. We are a little too high side. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy filled in themselves. Go to verse 17. It says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. Mm -hmm. For their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through truth. And who else? Neither I pray for these alone. But all those that what? Which those should believe on me through the word. Through, through the word that they speak. So this is how you built on the apostles and prophets because the apostles. In Matthew 16 who he said. What did he say that Peter would be? So he would be the foundation of the house. Yeah, I don't care what they might do. She gonna have to let me know. And I'm paying for that. I can't just let a minute go by. I ain't let nothing go by. I cut that show. I'm already at a dollar and a half. She'll let me know when she she got in. She inbox and say, "Hey, I'm back." I ain't got nothing to do with that. Yeah, and plus I don't want to hear that music. I'm sorry. Nah, I lost my train of thought. My bad. So when you look at the other uh, apostles and the prophets, right? No. He taught the apostles that the whole book was about him. Peter was that foundation on which he laid that, that house on. So everything is built on the apostles and then the prophets. Because the apostles was the ones that sent out to preach him. Let's look at Nehemiah 6 and 7. Because the prophets didn't preach him. The apostles was the one who was sent out to preach. This is how the people got the knowledge and information of Yahushua HaMashiach. The apostles were sent out to do it. And they had the word of the prophets. Go ahead, man. It says, And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Yehudah. And now shall it be reported to the king concern, according to these words, Come now therefore and let us take counsel together. Now let's look at Matthew 10 and 1. And when he had called unto him the, the, his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean ruach to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, the first Simon, who was Peter, and Andrew his brother, James, son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and Labaius, whose surname is Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, also the betrayer. These twelve sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and to any, in any city of Samaria enter not, but go rather to the lost sheep and of the house of Israel, and go and preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So you had to sit back and you had to realize you need to be preparing yourself for the kingdom. In order to build this house, you need to prepare yourself. I mean, you got to go outside the street or outside the gate. You have to separate yourself. You can't build a... You know, the house of Elohim was separate from everything. In the city, it was separate from everything. So if you're going to rebuild this house, then you have to separate yourself from everything. Come on back to Ezra chapter 2. Because there's a word in there when he said, For the house of Elohim to set it up in his place... That word for set it up is a mod. And it is to stand or remain or endure or to take one's stand or to hold one's ground. So once you have freely offered up to make this here and then the last place in this place is the foundation. So you're voluntarily standing on Mashiach. Because that's your foundation and your root. If you're going to build this house, then you have to voluntarily and willfully say that I'm going to take a stand. 
See, give me Ephesians 4 and 14. See, a lot of people are not willing to take a stand. So you get tossed around. When it comes down to y'all, in Revelation chapter 3, the master said, Thou art neither hot or cold, but lukewarm. He said, I'd rather thee that you be hot or cold and not lukewarm. He said, since you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because he wants you to take a stand. You have to take a stand. People, I, I'm not. I'm real leery of people when I see them dealing with this word and they're not willing to take a stand. You have to take a stand. Hamashiach took a stand against sin and death and beat it. So how are you going to say that you want to follow in his footsteps and then you're not willing to... You can't build this house if you're not willing to be firm and stand. We just read where he said he that endured to the end the same shall be saved. It means you got to stand. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ephesians 4 and 14. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to the sea. Do you see that the people that came up with Korah, you see how Korah was lying and wait to the sea? And you had the people who were with Moses, they took a stand. But the people that went with him, see, they got tossed to and fro and ended up being destroyed. All because they followed behind a man who was following after the desires of his own heart. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's where people get caught up in that. Your heart, go and give it Jeremiah 17 and 9, man. That heart is the most destructive thing that, that it can be. You know, you know what the book of Proverbs say? If a man trusts in his own heart, what he is? A fool. That's why you got to make you a new one. You both to trust in your new heart. Because he said, I'm going to take that heart of stone out of you and give you a heart of flesh. You can't trust in your own heart. You got to trust in the heart of Elohim. If you're going to rebuild this house. What does she have? Go ahead. It's 515. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and, and desperately it's de Your mind is desperately. Why he told you you got to cast away from you all your transgressions. And you can see how desperately wicked the heart is. Because the heart was trying to convince the master not to sacrifice himself. Read it again. The heart is desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? Who can know it? You who searches the heart. And try the reins, even to give every man according to his way, according to the fruits of his doing. So you guys, why? That's why you got to cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and ruach, perfecting the fear of Elohim and Kadeshness. You have to be made new. Give it you have to renew your mind. What it is? Second Corinthians chapter four, about verse fourteen. No, go sit down. Sit down. That verse four and fourteen. Go sit down. I guess she said she's just gonna sit right here. It say, "I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons to warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Mashiach, yet have ye not many fathers." I shouldn't do what they say in Second Corinthians four and fourteen. I'm in First Corinthians. It says, knowing that he was raised up, you, the master Yahushua shall raise up us also by Yahushua and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through thanksgiving of many renown to the esteem of Elohim. Mm -hmm. For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish. Yet inward man is rejoicing day by renewed day by day. So the outward man is perishing. That's how I mean when we talk about how he cast away his iniquity. So it wasn't his ruin because he cast away the outward man. He cast away the flesh and he cast away the blood. When he cast that away, that inward man was it being renewed because what rose, rose him from the dead? But the word that was in him, it was already in him. I done told y'all that before. If you want to be saved, oh, she said she ran out of minute. If you want to be saved, then guess what you have to do? You have to, be, you have to get the word in you. That's what's going to raise you from the dead. Sit down and hug. Your face don't stay like that. Hey, hey, hug. You want to get popped? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I just looked you in your eyes and seen that you're not for real. You're looking for some type of comfort. You're not going to receive it. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and exter external weight of esteem. Now then, when you see what Mashiach did, like I said, did his inward man perish? No. His outward man perished. And that's what he mean when he's telling you to cast away from your iniquity. is to put on Yahushua HaMashiach. Put off the body of flesh and the body of sins. Take it off. And that's what he did. When he resurrected, did he not have a different body? And that's when he got that new heart and new ruach. So if you want a new heart and new ruach, then you have to cast off the flesh and that house can be rebuilt. Why? That's going in because he prepared the work outside and he rebuilt that house. And if you want to rebuild your house, because you got a house right now. But if you haven't cast that, that flesh off to build another house, that's the whole purpose of Solomon's temple being built and destroyed and rebuilt during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. And then the one Haggai talking about is the last one in New Jerusalem. So when you see Solomon's temple being destroyed and then rebuilt during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, it's telling you to, you need to, the whole time they were in captivity was to prepare them to rebuild that house because they were exiled and they were brought back in from being exiled. You were being exiled because of sin. Therefore, you have to destroy that house so you can rebuild the new house and be brought out of Babylon, which is confusion, which is brought out of the devil's house. Come on back to uh, Ezra. Let me see what Ezra 3 got for us. I had some in there earlier. Well, you know, in verse, in verse 69 in that Ezra chapter 2, why he pulled an Ezra 3 and 1 to you. That word for ability is koak. And you know what that word means? Strength. So he said they gave after their ability unto the treasure of the work. Three score and one thousand drams of gold and five thousand pounds of silver and one hundred priest garments. And so the priests and Levites and some of the people and the singer and the porters and the Nethems dwelt in their cities and Yasharal in their cities. So when it says that they offered up, they gave according to their strength. Give me that first Corinthians chapter 12 to deal with giving according to your strength. First Corinthians 12 and 3. Now we have to sit back and look at because you know what an average nigga take that for? See, you can only keep it to the best of your ability, y'all. Only the, that ain't what he talking about. Not the best of because that means the best of your strength. Wherefore I give you un to understand that no man speaking by the rock of Elohim calling Yahusha a curse, that no man can say Yahusha is Yahusha is master, but by the rock Hakodesh. Mm -hmm. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same ruach. There are differences of administration, but the same master. Mm -hmm. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same Elohim which worketh all in all. Mm -hmm. But the manifestation of the Ruach is given to every man that to profit with all. Mm -hmm. For to one is given by the Ruach word of wisdom, to another word of knowledge by the same Ruach, mm -hmm. to another faith by the same Ruach, mm -hmm. to another gifts of healing by the same Ruach, mm -hmm. to another the working of miracles, and to another prophecy, to a, another discerning of Ruach, mm -hmm. to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. Go ahead. But all these work that Separately. one mm -hmm. in the self same Ruach, dis dividing to every man severally as he will. So all of these people are given according to their strength for this house. Some got wisdom, some got faith, some got miracles, some got healing, but all of them are giving to the house according to their strength. Not according to, oh my God, I can, when, when, when you look at something right, when you deal with certain stuff, when you say to the best of your ability, you're leaving room for failure. You're leaving room for, I know I'm human, that's why you got to cast off the iniquity, you got to cast off the outward man and let him perish and let the inward man live just like Hamashiach did. That's why they ain't got no way of escaping from going to hell. You ain't got no way of escaping because he is doing exactly what he told you to do in Ezekiel. He cast away from him iniquity so it wouldn't be his ruin. He cast off the body of sin that it might be destroyed. Let's get that Roman chapter 7 verse 7. It says, for he 
that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with the Mashiach, we believe that we shall also live with him, mm -hmm. knowing that the Mashiach being raised from the dead died no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto Elohim. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves that ye be dead indeed to sin, but alive to Elohim through Yahushua HaMashiach, our master. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't let it reign. That you should obey it in the lust thereof. So that's how you got to already prepare yourself. We talked about that. Sit down and count the cost. Are you really preparing yourself to rebuild this house? Because they prepared themselves. You know the first thing they did? Look at Ezra 3 and 1. Let me get that out of the way. The first thing they did is they came out of captivity. And then they got the things necessary to build the house. So to get the things necessary to build the house, you need to first come out of sin. Then the next thing you need to be able to do is get knowledge, get wisdom, get understanding of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. And then you can prepare to build that house because now you can make that new heart, a new ruach, and be conformed to the image of his son and it be made like unto his image. Go ahead, man. Ezra 3 and 1. It says, and when the seventh month was coming, the children of Yashara were in cities. The people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Then stood up Yahushua, the son of Jehoshadak, and his brother and the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shelatiel, and his brother, and built the altar of Yahuwah, the altar of Elohim of Yashara, to burn offerings thereof, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And they set an altar upon his basins. For fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. And they offered burnt offering thereon unto Yahuwah, even burnt offerings morning and evening. That's good. Now you notice that they gathered together as one man, right? This is one household. But drop down to verse 7, though. I got to roll this 522. It says, and they gave money also unto the masons and carpenters. So the, they gave money to who? The masons and carpenters. And what did they give them? Uh, meat and drink. And, and what else? Oil. And oil unto them of Zidon. Pause. You know that word for masons here is katsav. And you know what it means? It means to cleave or divide or to hew or to make or to cut or to be engraved or to be cut from. So we look at they gave money to masons and to carpenters. The carpenters is Tarash, and that is somebody that is skillful to destroy. An engraver or an artificer or a craftsman. So what do you think this means if he's given, given they gave money to, to people to do one thing. One was to destroy or to engrave and the other one was to separate. And that's what he used to build this house. Now what was Amashiach's occupation? And it says a carpenter is skillful to destroy. That's what it says that word means. So let's look at uh. Well, we're going to pull it. In Hebrew chapter 2, it says he destroyed him that had power over death. That is the devil, right? In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, he said that the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So in order for this carpenter to build this house, then if he gave him money to destroy the house, what is the money that Yahushua was given if he's a carpenter? What was he paid? And what tribe means to get paid? <laughs> to be paid. There's a tribe that means Elohim has gave me my hire. Oh, it's a car. So, how did he, what was it that he paid him? What did he pay Hamashi out to go do that? Because he has to be skillful. I'm going to read that word again for you now. Because he's a carpenter. He said they gave money to the, to the masons and the carpenters. And they gave him meat, drink, and oil under them of Zidon and Tyre to bring cedar trees. And according to the grant that Cyrus of king of Persia. Now that word for grant is Rishon and that's permission. So these men were paid with permission of the king. That word for carpenter is Karash. It's a craftsman, an engraver, an artificer. And he's skillful to destroy. A workman. Don't you know in Ephesians chapter 2 he said we the workmanship of Hamashiach or the craftsman. Remember that, that craftsman in, in Exodus 31? That was from the tribe of Judah, and he brought the dude with him that was symbolic of Peter. 
And they had to fashion and engrave and build all of these things. Well, we are his workmanship in him. When you get in him, then he fashions you according to his liking and his desire, which goes back to everybody giving according to their ability because he fashions you how he sees fit. But that's only if you cast away your iniquity that will cause you to be destroyed. So when you look at this here, what did Hamashiach destroy? If he's skillful to destroy as a carpenter, what did he destroy? He destroyed sin and death. And if you look at a mason, what are the masons doing? The masons are the one who preaches the word, and when they preach the word, what is the word supposed to cause? A separation. So the house of Elohim is to be separate from everything. Everything in it is supposed to be kadash. From the stones that are used to build it, from the vessels that's inside of it, to the people who go in to do the service in it. So if you're going to be a part of that house, then you have to separate yourself. And we'll visit that in more greater detail another time. Come on, man. It says, from the first day was... Well, hold on. All right. It says... Well, drop brought, down to verse 9. Okay. It says, then stood Yahushua with his sons and brother, Kadmiel and his sons, the sons of Yehuda together, to set forward the workmen of the house of Elohim. The sons of Hanadad with their sons and their brother and the Levites. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of Yahuwah, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites and the sons of Asaf with symbols. When do y'all think the builders the laid the foundation? Who's the builders in this verse? If we're looking at the New Testament, who are the builders? So how did they lay the foundation of it? By blowing of trumpets. He said, when did they... he said they laid the foundation and then the priest put on apparel and they blew trumpets. <coughs> Isn't that? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a little where it's at. Hold on. Hold on, I gotta pull that up. Chapter uh, for well, Matthew twenty one. Matthew twenty one and one. And when they drew nigh to Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent you your two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village over against you, and straightway you will find the ass tied and the coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say all unto you, he shall say, You who will have need of them, and straightway he will send them. And all his all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jehusha commanded, and he brought the ass and the coat and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, the son of David. Root is he that come in the name of Yahuwah. You don't see them laying the foundation? Hosanna in the high. You know, not too long after that, what happened to him? He got, um, he got killed. Were they not blowing a trumpet before him? The people seemed very overjoyed, just like they were in Ezra, the laying the foundation of his house. Remember how we talked about that foundation in Psalms 118? In Psalms 118, remember it said that they would bind up the sacrifice with the cords or during the festival time. Mm -hmm. This is when the foundation was laid at the festival time. They were just prepping for it and getting excited. Continue on, sir. And, and, uh, 
It said when he was coming to you, what you need? No, not that there. We oh, coming. Ezra. Yeah, but I'm on Ezra Chapel. You know what? I might have to wait on that. Come on back to this Isaiah 44. It said, Thus said Jehovah thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am Yahuwah that maketh all things, that stretches forth Shalahim alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrated the tokens of the liars and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backwards and maketh their knowledge foolish, mm -hmm. that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that says to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited. And to the cities of Yehuda, ye shall be built. Remember John chapter 12, you say, Father, give me the esteem that I had with you. Of John 17, since the world began, right? So that he would rebuild it. Because Proverbs 80 say, when the foundation, before the foundation of the earth was made, I was there. Because he said that he would rebuild this house in the desolate places in Jerusalem. Ain't that what it say? Don't you know in Amos 8, what did he say? Or Amos 9, he said he would rebuild the tabernacles of David, right? And close up the breaches and make it was as it was before. So when you turn it around and you're looking at him destroying the house, because Jerusalem is desolate. Hamashiach is left desolate on the house. The house is desolate. He's got to rebuild it, does he not? Let's go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. It says, but ye are not in the flesh but in the Ruach if so be that the Ruach of Elohim dwell in you now if any man have not the Ruach of the Masha he is none of his mm -hmm. and the Masha being you the body is dead because of sin but the Ruach is life because of righteousness so the body has to you have to cast away that iniquity like he cast it away for that house to be rebuilt whose house we are because remember what it says in Hebrews 8 that this is the sanctuary which Yahuwah have pitched and not man See, to a certain, give me John 1 and 12. To a certain extent, right, even though we all created by Yah, a man pitched your tabernacle because a man decided to lay with your mama and release his bodily fluids and which made it with her egg and brought you here. But when you're talking about becoming a son or daughter of Elohim, no man can make that. No man can prepare that house. Go ahead. John 1 and 7. 1 and 12. But as many as received him, to him he gave power to become sons of Elohim, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but Elohim. So that's the only way to, the only way that house can be rebuilt is you who has to pitch it. Give me Ephesians 4 and 20. It says, But ye have not so learned the Mashiach. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as, as the truth in, my, in Yahushua, that ye put off concerning the formal conversation of the old man, which put off the what? The old the conversation. So you notice how you say if you heard the truth and you have learned of him, that means you would have prepared yourself, and then you would have went outside the camp and died with him and suffered a reproach like we talked about Wednesday, right? And then you would do what? Go ahead. Then you would. Be renewed in the ruach of your mind. You would be made new, or your house would be rebuilt. Go ahead. And that ye put on the new man, which after Elohim is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one body. So everybody's a member or a block of this house, like we've seen in First Corinthians 12. So if you're preparing yourself without the house, then you have to be able to say that this place has to be rebuilt. Because he rebuilt Hamashiach into a greater house. Give me Haggai 2 and 7. And then after that, Philippians 3 and 20. And you start right there. It says, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with esteem, says you who of hosts. Mm -hmm. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, gold says mine. you who of hosts. And the esteem of the latter house shall be greater than... The esteem of the latter house shall be what? Greater than the former. 
than the former. Would you now you gotta remember something when Hamashiach was in the flesh, that was the esteem. Let's see how. Hebrews one and three. Make it one and one. But he said the latter house would be greater than the former house. We didn't read that verse, right? But in the book of Ezra, in that second chapter, towards the end, or that third chapter, I should say, it said the elders wept when they saw the new temple because they remembered the old one. And they seen that the new one was in greater state or esteem than the old one. The same way that when the apostles saw Hamashiach, they wept and were overjoyed because the latter house was greater than the former house that they seen before he was killed. Mm -hmm. Everything coincided together because they saw the former house and then they saw the latter house. So then we have to take that is that we are the former house and we need to destroy this former house so we can be great like the latter house. Go ahead. It say, "All he who has sundry times and in diverse manners spake in past times to the fathers and prophets, had by the prophets, having these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being in brightness of his esteem and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins." Sat down on the right so hand. So notice that he said he's in the made of the express image of the father. So when he was in the flesh, he was the esteem of the father. Therefore, that house had much esteem and was great. But when he read Philippians 3 and 19. Because everybody likes to say, you don't need. That, that's how you can so how simple people is. You don't need no church building. Need no temple. We're the house. He doesn't worship. He's not as a dwell in temples made with hands. Of course not, dummy, because that's a place that man has pitched. You know what I'm saying? He's looking for a place that he pitched and he built. And the only way that can happen is if you prepare yourself without. And then you can build your house or reestablish it. So that's what he had to do. He prepared his son without or in Shamahim so he could reestablish the new covenant because he knew you was going to break it. That's why he destroyed the old house to rebuild the new one because he knew you were going to break it. And dudes don't even realize that, that that's the, the, the similitude that's going on, that the temple was tied to covenants. That's why, he say, that's why Matthew 24, he say, I'm going to destroy this temple because I'm making another covenant and I'm rebuilding another house that man need not have to touch. That, I, that I'm that house. They don't want to see that though. Go ahead, man. Philippians 3 and 19. It says... Whose end is destruction, whose Elohim is their belly, and whose esteem is their shame, who mind earthly things. Yeah. For our conversation is in Shamaim, from which also we look to the Savior and Master, Yahushua HaMashiach, mm -hmm. who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his esteemed body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. See, now sit back and look at it, right? In Luke 6 and 46, he said, Why call ye Master, Master, and you don't do the things that I say? Because if he's your master and he's your ruler, going back to saying Cyrus is the shepherd, we talked about last night that Cyrus means the, the possessor of the furnace or of the fire. The master came to immerse you with the ruach and with fire. He's the shepherd or the ruler or the teacher. The only way he said back you could be taught, he said he sent back the apostles because he taught them in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the songs the things concerning himself, that he that believed on him after scripture hath said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, speaking of the Ruach HaKadosh, that you could be saved and that this is how the city can be rebuilt. If Cyrus or Yahusha doesn't teach you, then that city can't be rebuilt. Therefore, your house can't be rebuilt, which is going back to what we read in Ephesians 4, that if you have learned of Yahusha, then you would have destroyed the old man who was corrupt according to deceitful lust and be created after the new man and true Kadesh and righteousness and put off all these things which are detrimental to your soul. Well, hallelujah for Yahusha. Slide on out of this.